All right. So, ladies and gentlemen, first of all, we're going to be plugging in g of x into f of x, right? g of x into fx. So we have fx, and we're basically saying g of x up here, g of x down here, minus 1. Now, this isn't that fun because we have rational expressions in the numerator and in the denominator. Ah, right? Ah, doesn't look fun at all. This is what we call a complex fraction, when we have fractions in the numerator and the denominator and we're separated by addition. So one thing that we want to do when we're, when we're having complex fractions, we want to simplify this. Now remember when we did division, the easiest thing to get rid of a fraction and denominator is multiply by the reciprocal, right? But that you can't do that here because now you have two terms that are separated by subtraction. So the best thing to do here is to multiply by a common multiple that would get rid of your fraction. So again, please remember, if I have a fraction, 1 half, and I multiply by the same number on the top and bottom, I am not changing the answer. Would everybody agree with me? OK. So what I want to do is come up with a number or an expression that's going to get rid of my fraction in the numerator and denominator. Because I can't just multiply by, um, well, actually, I can. Think about this. Here, I can, I can multiply by my common multiple, but I want to make sure I multiply in my numerator and my denominator. So when I have this, actually, I guess the same description is going to work. The only difference here is now I have to distribute that. So I'm still kind of doing the same idea. I'm multiplying by the reciprocal. Just remember that it has to now be distributed in the denominator. So when I distribute in the numerator, this actually gives me just 1. This gives me 1. And then minus, make sure you include parentheses, x plus 2. Okay, so again, multiplying by reciprocal gets rid of that denominator. Okay? Now I can just simplify this to give me 1 over, let's see, that's going to be 1 minus 2, so that's going to be um, negative x minus 2. I'm sorry, negative x minus 1, right? Sorry. Okay, and now if I wanted to find the domain, negative x minus 1 cannot equal 0. So um, what's going to make that 0 is going to be negative 1, right? Add 1, add 1, negative x cannot equal 1. So therefore it would be negative infinity to negative 1, union, negative 1 to infinity. Okay, so complex fractions aren't that bad. Just get rid of the denominator just like you guys have done before.